In this lesson, I am going to discuss orthogonality in inner product spaces. Let us recall that two vectors u and v in an inner product space is called orthogonal if their inner product is equal to zero. Take note that orthogonality depends on the inner product. For example, let us consider these two vectors u and v. They are orthogonal with respect to the Euclidean inner product space because using this inner product, this is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 times negative 1, which is really equal to 0. However, using the weighted Euclidean inner product defined as follows, their inner product is going to be 3 times 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 times negative 1. And this is equal to 3 minus 2, which is equal to 1. So they are not orthogonal with respect to the weighted Euclidean inner product. Let us show that these two matrices here are orthogonal using the standard inner product in M22. What is this inner product? It's just equal to the product of the components, right? But you will have 1 times 0 plus 0 times 2 plus 1 times 0 plus 1 times 0. This is really equal to 0. Let us recall again the is inner product on the set of continuous functions from negative 1 to 1. Let us show that these two functions here are orthogonal. Let us compute their inner product. This is equal to the integral of f of x, g of x from negative 1 to 1. f of x times g of x is x cubed. This is equal to x to the 4 all over 4 from negative 1 to 1, which is equal to 1 fourth minus 1 fourth, and this is really equal to 0. We can also generalize the Pythagorean theorem in an inner product space V. Take note that this is only true for orthogonal vectors. The square of the length of u plus v is equal to the sum of the square of u and the square of the length of v. Let us verify the Pythagorean theorem with our functions f of x and g of x because we have just shown that these two functions here are orthogonal. So thus, they must satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Let me first compute f plus g squared. That is equal to the inner product of f plus g with itself. That's equal to the definite integral of f plus g of x squared. This is equal to f plus g is x plus x squared. Then you square that. This is equal to This is equal to x cubed over 3 plus x4 over 2 plus x5 over 5 from negative 1 to 1. This is equal to 16 over 15. Next, let us compute the norm of f squared. This definite integral of f of x squared. This is equal to x cubed over 3 from negative 1 to 1 or... Two thirds. Next, the square of the length of g is the definite integral of the square of g of x. g of x is equal to x squared, so g of x squared is x to the 4. And this is equal to 2 fifths. Let us verify the Pythagorean theorem. The square of the length of f plus g is 16 over 15. Is this equal to the square of the length of f is 2 thirds and the square of the length of g is 2 fifths. 2 thirds plus 2 fifths is really equal to 16 over 15. We have just verified our Pythagorean theorem. Next, 
We can also talk about the orthogonal complements of a subspace of a real inner product space V. Again, it is defined as the set of vectors in V that are orthogonal to all elements in W. And we also use the same symbol that we used in Rn, W perp. So similarly, W perp is a subspace of your inner product space V and the orthogonal complement of the orthogonal complement of a subspace is itself. We can also define the projection of a vector u onto a vector v. It is defined as the dot product of uv over the square of the length of v times the vector v. Let us find the orthogonal projection of f onto g using the standard inner product on c01. The projection of f onto g is the inner product of f and g all over the square of the length of g times g. Let us first compute for the inner product of f and g. This is definite integral of f of x times g of x from 0 to 1. We have evaluated this integral before. This is equal to x4 over 4. And this is now equal to 1 fourth. Next, the norm of g is definite integral of g of x squared. We have already evaluated this earlier. And the integral is equal to x to the fifth over 5 running from 0 to 1, and this is equal to 1 fifth. Hence, the projection of f on g is equal to the inner product is 1 fourth all over the length of g, which is 1 fifth times the function g. That's equal to 5 fourths g, or 5 fourths times x.